Hello and welcome back to the Fight and Talk 2 podcast with myself, Mr. Fight and Talk, aka Connor. Joined as always by the fantastic co host, George. And today we have a very special guest. We have Norbert Nyoveni from Bellator. He's a pro Bellator fighter, pro MMA fighter. The kid's an absolute machine. I know firsthand how hard he can hit. He <laughs> sparred. It was a lo- long, long time ago, and he still gave me black eyes. I don't even think I touched him once. Norbert, how are you doing, mate? Thank you very much for joining us. I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. No, the pleasure is all ours, man. The pleasure is all ours. So we're gonna jump straight in, man. What got you into MMA? When when was like that that start for you? So funny enough, my dad always wanted me to get into sports. So uh, I've, he obviously martial arts and fighting was his main goal. So I started with karate when I was like two, uh, very young actually, um, and then. Uh, I, was, I tried wrestling and everything. I, it never really got to me. It was basketball for me for a long time, basketball and skateboarding. Um, and then in 2010, I think, or maybe 2009, he opened his gym. And then I went down for one session. I was like, I'm in love with this. And ever since, I've been doing it, like, constantly every single day. So, yeah. And is, is fighting your your 24-hour day job? Or have you got another job on the side to support your, your fighting? I had like a year or so when I didn't really have a fight or anything. Uh, and I, I finished school by then. So I, was, I had to find something. So I was teaching kids maps, like tutoring. Uh, that I had that, but then I was like, this is not for me. So as soon as I had a fight, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I've got enough money in my bank account to survive, so I'm out. And then, yeah, so since then, uh, since 2019, this is my uh, full-time job, luckily. Full-time job, yeah. Because I remember yeah. a few years ago, we were in a changing room and you said that you might have to start working at Domino's to support your fight <laughs> career, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I was, yeah, I was, it was quite funny because I was, I think, I don't even know if I was still, maybe first year in college or something like that. And my mom was like, we well, need to find a job. I'm like, how? Like, <laughs> I've got college all day, then I've got training. How, like, how can I work? It's like on the weekend. So Domino's, they were like, oh, we're looking for someone to work with us like, over the weekend. So I was like, cool. So I went there. Luckily, I didn't get that job. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose at least that would give you some, uh, that would be like free food as well, you know. But I guess eating Domino's while you're training is not the best option. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. And to be fair, at the time, I was eating very bad. Like, now I don't even eat, like, junk food. I have, like, pizza like, after every fight. That's all. So, uh but, you know, it is what it is. Like, it would have been fun because I was thinking, what else can I do? But I was like, well, I do like food and I do like making it. So why not? But, yeah. Nah, luckily, cool, luckily, like, my path in a different way. Maybe maybe with that, I would have been too tired to do those sessions. Or maybe, you know, maybe I'm too tired to go in for one session. Maybe I learned something that I still use, you know. So, you know, you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. George, you had a question about being in his nutrition and stuff, right? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, um, you know, we see with lots of MMA fighters in them today that they have nutritionists and they have that kind of like added support now. Do you have something like that or do you just go on your own or how does it work for you? So I've got two different guys. So when I cut weight, um, I use uh, I use professional fighting nutritionists. So um, I've, used, I've used Dean Kirk. He's a very good UK guy. Uh, I've used him for my last two fights um the one before that I was so ill that I didn't eat for two weeks so I was on weight way before the fight <laughs> um then uh, now I just started working with uh, a Hungarian guy as well who helps me with um with my nutrition like out of camp in a way I'm still in camp but I just needed a few he's actually a bodybuilding coach and usually they don't transfer very well but this guy really knows what he does. So um, a friend of my dad's and, and I was speaking to my dad. and was like, why don't you try this guy? So I'm, I messaged him and, you know, he gave me a very good plan. So I've been following that the last three, four months. But usually I, I have someone for my weight cuts. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Because I guess having the so many fighters get into this and they're kind of just doing it themselves and making their own meal prep and stuff like that. But until you reach a certain level in your career, you kind of don't have the money to be able to bring someone in, right? So it, it yeah. must be pretty hard just do it, just doing it on your own if you don't have that knowledge of food. Yeah, 100%. And also, I was very lucky because I was in a position where I could afford one 
early in my uh, like early really I was what three and o, yeah three and o when I had my first nutritionist so uh, and it just helps and you need it and you know and now even let's say even if I didn't have one I, I would know how to do it basically but like I still rather work with nutritionists but I was I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to start working with like yeah to be able to work with nutritionists and and I'm still early in my career like loads of people will start doing it after 10 fights so uh yeah I'm, I'm glad yeah of course man of course so obviously Bellator has been a little bit quiet over the past couple of months during the pandemic and stuff but you say you're in camp at the moment and obviously a lot of fighters have this kind of don't get ready, stay ready kind of mentality, you know, and you're one of those guys, you always want to stay ready. So have you got anything in the pipeline over the next coming months? Is there any talks of contracts or anything? Because I see Bellator are going to be going to be, going to be kicking off soon. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have anything confirmed yet, which is really annoying because I'm training just as hard as if I had one. And it's just a bit annoying because what am I looking forward to? And I know obviously it's my over-improvement and stuff like that, but it does get to you a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just training and then whenever the call comes, um, I should be ready. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause your, your goal has always been to be the, be a champion in a promotion, right. Ever since you've been super yeah. young. So are you still on track for that? Even though, you know, are you, have you kind of given yourself a little bit more leeway due to the pandemic and giving yourself an extra year? So, you know, you obviously yeah, have to so, beat John Jones to, to the, to the championship, right? Yeah, exactly. So. I'm not going to lie. I, I still have that. Listen, I'm going to be a world champion no matter what. Like, I know it. I work so hard and I know the people around me are the best. And even, you know, like the coaches at SU are great. Absolutely. So uh, I, I have no doubt that I will be a world champion. But they, because of this pandemic and the whole, and the lot of things that happened, obviously, you, you know, it's like you've got a goal that you're going towards, but maybe sometimes it changes a little bit. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to achieve being world champion, but maybe not the youngest. I mean, I'm 21, and because of COVID at the moment, there's not a lot of fights. So I doubt I'll be able to work my way up, you know, to that level, like, that quick, just because of this. Do you get what I mean? So yeah, yeah, of course. Also, now I realise I don't want to rush here. Like, what I, like I, I just don't want to rush here. Like, middleweight divisions are, like, packed. Like, don't get me wrong, John Jones is middleweight, uh, like, have you did, Light heavyweight division was packed as well, but I feel like now it's a bit different. Like now, everyone needs to get a bit older because, like, the level is just getting better and better. And all those guys that he fought were top top guys. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of them, well, most of them were out of their prime. I'm still, I love John Jones. Like he's amazing, uh, but I feel like some of them weren't in their prime. Whereas a lot of middleweights now are in their prime, and you know they hard work. So. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. I, I'm just going to work hard and there's only one thing that I need to achieve and that there's a title and I will get that. Absolutely. No doubt, man. No doubt. I've seen you training before and, you know, I've seen you seen your fights and stuff like that, you know, and you, you do put in the work and you've been a monster for so many years now as well. So it's good to see you coming up and, you know, putting on them full shows. You say, obviously, there's a lot of people in the gym that are very, you know, they're in the prime of their career and stuff like that. Does that add any pressure to you coming out into the cage? that you've got all these people in the gym and you kind of, you, you don't want to let them down. You don't want to let everyone else down, but you know, you don't want to let yourself down. How does that affect you? So it's a very complicated question because I never want to let anyone down. Uh, obviously myself, like I've got this view about myself. Luckily it's been that view about myself been broken a lot, a lot many, many times at the gym. So that's, I feel like a lot of people only get that when they lose a fight, you know, in the cage. But luckily, I get beaten up at the gym all the time. So I had stuff when it was like, wow, like maybe I'm not where I think I am. And I, I ended up coming through. Um, it just, it happens as part of the sport. Um, but I, again, I don't want to let anyone down. But at the same time, what you said that because they're so good and, you know, and like Paige is a superstar, that makes me more hungry. Like I, I, I want to be there, like, you're the superstar, but I want to be that. Like, you know, when we go out, like when, when I, I'm out with my friends, uh, actually, I actually haven't even told this, uh, told this what I'm going to say to him. But when I'm with my friends, people come up to me, take pictures, it's cool. When I'm with Paige, everyone comes up to Paige, take pictures. And don't get me wrong, that's not what I'm doing, but like that gets you like, okay, all, all right, cool. But next time he's going to, they, they want to take a picture with me as well. And then like push it, well, it pushes me. Like 
you know, I'm very competitive with everything. So uh, it's not even the fact that take, taking pictures like, okay, so you got, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be the next one who's getting uh, their pictures taken. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's, it's a kind of a competition for me. Yeah, of course. And I guess it's a nice role model to have as well. Obviously, he's done very yeah. well in his career. You know, it's a good role model and it's a good person to look up to in kind of like a, a big brother kind of view yeah. as well, you know, so you can look at him and go, I want to do what he's doing, but I want to do it better, you know, and he's humble yeah. enough and, and a nice enough guy to be like, I want you to do better and I want you to do better yeah. than me as well, you know. Yeah. So everyone's got this view of Paige because of the way he fights and, and what he does in his fights. That oh, he's cocky, he's cocky, and this and that. He's one of the loveliest guys out there. I literally love him to bits, and and he helps me with so many things. I know for a fact, like you know, if I'm like even today, like we were training, whatever, and just came out of the way, like like oh oh, have you? This is what I've been doing. It's been working for even even if he does this against me, he's gonna tell me what he's doing so I can pick up and learn it from him. Uh, also, like, with loads of other things, like, we speak and then he tells me what he knows about this and that. So he's he's kind of a mentor. So I'm very lucky because, obviously, I've got the coaches as, as mentors and my teammates, you know. I've got Paige and Shipman. Uh, obviously, like, I don't know if you remember Felix, Felix and Kammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, like, he's, he's, he's not in the big promotions yet, but he's amazing, like... What, what he does to people, especially on the ground, is, you know, and when you've got these people around you and they can help you with loads of all the best shirts, the two best shirts and, and a mayor, uh, when you've got all these people around you and giving you advice and helping you with not just fighting, but with everything, like, in general life, you know, then then you're lucky. And and I'm very lucky as well because even out of the gym and, and, and just general life, I've got friends around me who can always help me and give me advice and, and know uh a, more about one thing that i know that i will need in life so uh i'm i'm just very lucky to have the people around me that yeah, I have. of course of course man it is that whole gym is just it's just a family as well you know you're rolling together you're trying to beat each other up on the mats and in the and in the cage and stuff like that but as soon as it gets out it's it's, it's a pure family gym and it is you, you can't you can't really replicate that kind of thing you know no it's it's yeah it's it's just different i was actually thinking about it yesterday or something like uh, i don't even know something happened and it says seven years ago i don't know what it was but maybe when i joined the gym or something i don't even remember maybe the first session there and uh, i'm like these guys raised me like they because always my dad's in hungary so they've been my my always my coach has been like them those role models and, and they've been looking after me and if i did something stupid they put it on me i got beaten up for a lot of stupid things and they showed me as a man. They raised me, they, well, I said, ah, oh, I made a joke. That was kind of funny. It's not going to be funny anymore. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was actually laughing quite a lot by myself. I was, then I thought that you guys weren't laughing. I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no, but they, they did uh, raise me, you know, and, and they made me who I am now. Without them, you know, the <laughs> I said stupid stuff and I got beaten up for it. Uh, I've gone a lot of life advice and I'm still getting them and I'm just, you know, happy to, to have them around me, basically. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. Oh, man. Well, it was actually a funny joke. It's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask, like, for everyone that, like, kind of, like, is going to tune into this and watch this, like, like, how would you describe yourself as a fighter? Like, what's the type of style that you're, you know, that you like to go with? Well, you know, try, if you can explain that, you know, I think I've seen you in the past say you had quite an all-round kind of game where you want to develop an all-round game, so people struggle to prepare for you. So, you know, how would you describe yourself at the moment? Yeah, I always say I'm the, I'm the full package. My size is the full package because I know I can, you know, obviously my lot, that's one thing that annoyed me with my last fight because uh, cause, uh, I got hit in the first 10 seconds because I was just too, I wasn't there. I was a bit too too lazy, like a, a bit too calm. And I got, I got clipped and I got up and then I went online and everyone's like, oh, this guy's got no hands, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, because like my last fight, <laughs> that's how I won, just striking. And and obviously like I've got background in, in ground game and wrestling and stuff like that. But my striking, like I love striking. You probably see me do more striking in the gym than than ground. So uh, it's just the fights. I feel like when I when it gets there, like I've got better ground than most people. So uh, 
Yeah, um, yeah, I would say the full package. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah, and do you feel like you're having? Obviously, I've seen all of your fights, but in the most recent fights, you've kind of adopted a little bit more of a hands down style, you know. So that's obviously coming yeah. from Paige as well, right? Yeah, well, I feel like my last three fights being like that. Even even my amateur fights, I did it once. So obviously, that's from Paige and and Lexi, and they they helped me put it together. Um, I feel like I'm going to come out a bit different in my next fight. We'll see. Because uh, I just changed a few little things. I still do the hands down. I don't like having my hands up. It looks cooler when it's down. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I pick it up because I know that it's so unorthodox that people can't really train for it. So uh, but I'm lucky because my whole style since I was a kid, like, like I remember when I, I came to London shoot, I was like just very basic, like everyone just hands up and walking forward, blah, 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 get hit. And then I was I started training with the smaller guys and and obviously the coaching it's in the gym like you know it's they always they were always telling me that oh it's the movement and this and that and I was like 15 when I started watching like Dillo Show and and Cruz and started like looking at their footwork and and all those things so to me it's always about it's, it's always been about movement and and to hit and not get hit so my favorite saying is. Uh, from uh, Willie Pap, who's like one of the best defensive boxers ever. And he said, he who hits and runs away lives to fight another day. So uh, I tried to I tried to do that. I tried to hit people and not get hit. <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Of course. In this world of, uh, you know, obviously after the Max Holloway fight, I don't know if you saw it, he said that he wasn't yeah. doing any sparring. He was doing like Zoom sparring and stuff like that. But you're still throwing hands in the gym pretty hard and you obviously get yeah. hit pretty hard as well in the gym. But do you think that's kind of like a dying breed of of heavy sparring or do you think that's still something that's an integral part of the game? No, that that's, I feel like that's so important. Like people forget that that guy's been fighting on the top level since he was my, like 21. And, uh, you know, he's been, he's, he had a lot of fights and it kind of changes when you got that. Um, now maybe they do like top sparring now. I doubt he's not doing anything. Like I doubt he's not, or maybe just a few hard spars, but people forget that that guy, has been fighting for a long time. Also, he did speak like this, like after the thingy. I mean, he still spoke better than I do because I can't speak for shit. But, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, he, you know, people forget that he's had a lot of fights and a lot of spars, and he's been there since he was very young as well. So, like, I'm not gonna lie. When I, by the time I'm thirty, or he's around that age as well, I don't really want to spar that much either, because <laughs> you know, you know, it, it does get to you. Obviously, that's why you try not to get hit. But um, I feel like, especially like I, I heard it from a few young guys who's got even less fights than me or whatever. It's like, oh, sparring is not like, I'm like, shut up, man. Like, what do you know? Like, you, had, you barely had a pro fight. Like, what do you know about what's best? Because I know that the people are very successful around me. They include my dad. They include my coaches. They include my teammates and a lot of other professional fighters. They believe in hard sparring. And there's a reason for that. So, uh, you know. It's one of those things someone told me that, oh, well, running is hard on your knees, so don't run for cardio, do something else. I'm like, yes, but it does help. Like, you can't say that it doesn't help because that's probably one of the best ways to build your cardio up, runs, road work. So, yeah. Yeah, of course, man. And obviously, talking about, you know, strength and conditioning and cardio and stuff, you do a bit of CrossFit, don't you? Do you how, how do you kind of incorporate that into your training? Because cross, CrossFit is pretty taxing on the body, but when you see the CrossFit games and stuff, these guys and these girls are monsters you know they are monsters in their cardio their strength their overhead lifts everything you know so wh why why did you go to crossfit was that influence from your from your dad or your training partners or something or was that just something you did yourself so i actually went to kuwait and uh in kuwait i went down to the gym and was like like i've done cross like crossfit it wasn't really a crossfit but it was crossfit when i was younger then you know i never really knew what CrossFit was like, do you get what I mean? I always thought it was like circuits, uh, like like a circuit session. And I went to Kuwait and I did a few sessions there and I was like, wow, this is great. So I came here, I started working, uh, um, I started training at one of one of the gyms around me. It's called CrossFit Kia. It's in Ashford where I live. Uh, it's, it's run by my friend Ash and uh, it's just, you know, and I just fell in love with it and I started doing it constantly. And then, you know, Alex had to tell me a few times that, you know, just take that back, just come in the gym because <laughs> that was days when I was injured. I was like, ah, you know what? I can still do CrossFit. <laughs> and Lexus was like, 
<laughs> no, come in the gym. What's fucking wrong with you? You're gonna still work out, then come here. Uh, and then also during lockdown, um, uh, um, I was very lucky because uh, Ash let me borrow some stuff, mm-hmm. so I was doing CrossFit at home. And then as soon as uh, <clears throat> uh, professional athletes were allowed to train, then we just went there and it's literally CrossFit. Like, I did like two sessions a day, like I programmed it myself. I so got into it, uh, but. One thing uh, that I need to say that my cardio is still better than the CrossFit guys. Like my scores on like the acid baths and stuff like that, still better than like Matt Frazier's. They do lift heavier than me, but cardio is king. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. As long as you're at the gas tank, it will see you right through to the end, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so obviously you're you're not from the UK. You're from Hungary, right? Have you got a big following in yeah. Hungary? How do you feel? you know, fighting for your home country and that kind of stuff. I know you're always very vocal on the mic afterwards and stuff that you, that, you know, you always tell everyone how old you are. You're doing it for your country. You're doing it for, for that kind of stuff, you know, but how Listen, do you feel fighting for, for Hungary? That I do get a lot of shit from home, well, back home, but to be fair, now England is my home. Like I grew up here, like I, I've been living here since I was 14. So seven years uh, and since like I basically became a man here and, and all my friends are here. Like the only people I really speak to from Hungary, I'm hungry, I'm my, my, it's my dad and, you know, that side of the family. Uh, don't get me wrong, I still love it, whatever. But, like, now I feel like I've got, like, that dual citizenship. Mm-hmm. And so when I walk out, I walk out with a British flag and, like, a Union Jack and a Hungarian flag. Also, it's with the with the fan, like, like with my friends and stuff like that. It's kind of funny because in Hungary, it's more like all around the place people know me. Like, like if I go here, some people will stop me and whatever. But here in England, it's my area. Like, I live in Surrey. So, like, my area is, like, great. Like, the other day, the Amazon driver comes in. He's like, wait, I was just watching your fight. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> then I had another one. Oh, I had two funny ones. Uh, one was um, my little sister was walking out, like, oh, who's picking you up? I was like, oh, my big brother. His name is Norbert, whatever. And the kids was like, the, his uh, her classmate was like, no way. <laughs> really? And he, like, apparently knew everything about me. And then there was another one that's kind of funny. Is my English teacher. He's, he's great. He, he like, my G, English GCSE were, like, A's, like, all my, my exams. And that's because of him, because he was so good. So I always owed him something. And I never knew how I was going to pay back to him. But um, one of my friend, my best friend's mom uh, works in the school that I, go to, I went to. And he goes, uh, yeah, so it turns out, like, uh, my English teacher's nephew or something like that just walked up to him and was like, Oh, look at him, it's sick fight. And he was like, Oh no, I used to teach him. <laughs> so I got a little, uh, I gave him, I gave the, the boy a little autograph. And then, but that's great. But then Hungary again, there was I went to a place and it's like, um, I bought some charity stuff. Like I went to charity and I, I bought some food. And uh this uh there's an old woman waiting for me, and I'm like, Oh, hi, my name is Norbert. Um, I came here and she goes, Oh yeah, I know who you are. What's your last fight? And this is like an eight-year-old woman. So I'm like, whoa, they're sick. And when that kind of stuff gets to you, well, like, there was another kid in Hungary when I was like, so who did, because he came to my dad's gym to see me because they found out I was there. And I was like, oh, so who's your favorite fighter? He was like, he didn't really want to look at me. You know, he's like, well, you. I was like, oh my God, they're so cool. When this kind of shit happened, this is why, like, one of the reasons why you do it. Like, I don't care. It's not, for me, it's not about the, the fact that it's like fame and stuff like obviously that that's good as well and like you know helps with a few things uh but the, the fact that you know it's just like these kids like they look up to you and you know you can infl- influence the next generation if i can bring more uh, kids back into the sport or or away from from like a, a road life or whatever, whatever it is do you get what i mean like that to me that's so good like, i'm just so happy to have those kind of they have that influence on some people that, yeah, it's nice. And that's why I just need to be myself and not be someone else. Also, I need to try not to do a lot of stupid things. So <laughs> when you've got eyes on you, you know, everything just gets a bit magnified. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I'm just I'm glad that I've, I've got this. Yeah, not a lot of 21-year-olds can say, 20, not a lot of 21-year-olds can say that. So uh, I'm so glad, so happy, I'm so happy. Yeah, of course, man. Obviously, with having fans as you do, obviously you've got fans in multiple countries and all over the world, I assume, you know, from your fighting style and how you act and stuff like that, because you are an absolutely sound guy. But do you think that's 
does Maybe. it add a lot of pressure to what you say on social media, for instance? Because you're kind of a bit hesitant about what you can say because you don't want to give anyone a wrong impression of how you are as a person, you know? Yeah, 100%. Especially, like, I've got, like, a sense of humour that maybe doesn't, you know... <laughs> if you just say it out loud and people don't know you, maybe that's, uh, you know, that doesn't look the best. So I have to be very careful with stuff I say. Um, also... I say a lot of stupid things if you watch some of my interviews. Uh, so I do have to be careful. But listen, I, I don't remind it. Just being myself. That's that's. Uh, I'm never going to forget that we were getting ready for a belt of five ages ago. I wasn't fighting. I was just there to warm up. And someone on the camera and they were filming us and, and the coach Alexa goes like, just be yourself. Like, I'm like, don't, he was like, don't act up. Just be yourself. And I was like, yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be myself, and and obviously you can see. I think you can see from my interviews and and my behavior how I'm changing and what's staying the same. And like, I feel like I used to try so hard, but I wasn't really trying. It was just I thought that was like you know when I, I did an interview with my glasses or whatever, and like sure, I'm like oh you know like I'm so cool, and like now I look back like I'm like what a dick. Well, that was like two years ago, three years ago. Oh my god, what a dickhead. Right now, like, you just change, you grow up a little bit. And, uh, oh, again, like, what do you expect from an 18-year-old kid? But, like, some things, they stay the same. Like, I'm still, I'm still going to be the world champion. I'm still going to tell that to people. If you're a dickhead, I'm still going to say that you're a dickhead. So, uh, uh, some, some things change. But, like, yeah, I look back and it's like, oh, man, why did I do that? Um, so, yeah, some things, yeah, you have to be careful with what you do and – Especially for myself, I just I just know I'm gonna regret it. I say a lot of stuff bef before I think, and and I just re regret it after. So, yeah, <laughs> I actually remember that interview. I re I remember watching it and thinking, this isn't him. I don't know who this kid is that's that's talking smack with his glasses on. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Listen, I'm enjoying it. Like this, like that. That's something that changed. Like I'm just not gonna go out my way. I'm still gonna look good. I try to look good, but. That's like, yeah, I'm just not going to, I'm just trying, not trying as hard as before. So, uh, yeah, I think it's growing you're, up. You're still, you're still trying hard in the gym, but maybe you're not trying to be a persona, you know? Oh yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I'm just being myself. I'm not trying hard to look cool what people think is cool. Because I know uh, me, myself, is pretty cool. Like, I beat people up. <laughs> I can, you know, that's, that's cool already. But I was, I'm funny, I'm good looking, I'm, I'm joking. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that's all I that's all I need to be, just myself, and then uh, it should be good. Yeah, yeah, of course, man, of course. So obviously, this is your full time job, right? So how much do you rely on on sponsors, for instance? You know, you because in Bellator you're still allowed to have sponsors on your trousers yeah. and and stuff like that, right? So how how much yeah. does that support you in your life? So. To be honest with you, I haven't had that many sponsors in my life. Uh, maybe for one fight or this and that. Uh, just last year, just before Corona, um, I started working with Stare Down Management. Uh, it's actually run by... Uh, it's funny how that worked out as well because the guy who does that, um, he does like, sponsorships and stuff like that. He's great. His name is Dom. Um, and I took my little brother and sister down to a boxing gym in my area, which is ran by one of my old schoolmates' dad. And then turns out that this guy started working with one of my teammates. And it was like, oh, I actually manage guys. And it was like, oh, you know, Amir, my, my teammate. I was like, cool, let's work together. And then we ended up working together. But then Corona came, so it kind of slowed everything down. Uh, but he's great, so... He's he's trying his best to, to get sponsors even through these these like horrible times because obviously not a lot of companies wants to want to uh, spend money now. Um, but yeah, that that should that would be great if I could have a sponsor that that helps me with like basic stuff. So, but at the moment, listen, I'm not I'm not crying about stuff. You know, I'm making money with fighting, so uh, a sponsorship would be a, a good extra. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Of course. George, have you got any other questions while we're here, man? I only had one other question, really, which was, I'd love to know what, like, you guys as professional fighters do away from, like, fighting and, like, what do you enjoy doing away from, you know, what you'll normally do as a day job? Yeah, um, I love long walks. I do like long walks. I really <laughs> like long walks. Well, that's perfect at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I do it every Sunday with my best friends, so... Yeah, even my dad's like, why don't you go with a girl? I'm like, shut up, dad. You don't know anything about me. 
yeah, so yeah, I like long walk. I like music. I don't know. I usually just like read and just probably like watch TV. That's all. I'm just too tired for everything else. So like I'm 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 getting into a few different stuff, but I'm not making that public just yet. So uh, just yet. <laughs> yeah. But course. yeah, so that that's really it's just basic, it's just recovery, like with the training that we do, you're just so tired, like you yeah, of course don't really want to do anything else like i don't really want to go out especially when we now now that we can't go out i want to go out but when we can go out i don't really want to go out so uh uh but yeah it's just not like i'd rather stay like you know have a nice hot bath you know the music you know some like bath salt <laughs> oh mate <laughs> oh mate <laughs> that's like that's 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 a perfect day just one session one hard session but not too long just just short enough that just short, but it's hard enough that you get, you know, that like you get a good workout. Then, you know, you get a massage, then you go home, have some food, hot bath, some bath salt, ah, and it's reading. That's that's a that perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> now, you talk about your recovery, right? How, how important yeah. is recovery? Are you still using, uh, still using the masseuse at the gym, right? Yeah, so uh, I work, so back to basics, so... Uh, uh, the other guy, Kerry and uh, and Paul, who who are great physiotherapists, so they they look up to me with like in terms of massage and all that. Uh, and then I started working with um, Quick Recovery Unit, which is a cry cryotherapy place. Uh, they got they got physiotherapy as well, a little gym section, but I go there for for the cryotherapy. Uh, and they just amazing like they they're they're actually their cryo chamber is actually different than most because most they use like most places they use um uh they use guests and stuff like that and that's when their head is out and stuff like that with this one you go in your whole body's in there and it's electric so and because of that it's a lot cheaper than all the other ones so i've been using them and uh to, like again quick recovery unit i can't tell people like it's so good it's so i literally just came from there as well it just and i said like everything got pushed back so i ended up finishing there too late again that's why <laughs> you guys had to wait for me <laughs> no nah, no worries man no worries so obviously you never had cryo chambers and stuff for the first half of your kind of like journey into mma yeah but how much yeah. does it affect your recovery do you think do you come out of that chamber of thinking right well that's it i'm ready for another five hour session like good to go or you know, it's yeah, it's more different. like it's more like I know that tomorrow I won't be as like you don't get me wrong, you go and you come out and it's like you feel alive, but then like obviously it was cold and your muscles, you know, uh they they're a bit cold as well. But to me it's more like oh tomorrow I know I'm gonna be able to work a bit harder than if I didn't do it. So I feel like that's the edge. And also like a lot of pain, like I had injuries and just my, my injuries just you know disappeared and well, not disappeared, but like what otherwise would have taken me three weeks of no training or nothing with cryotherapy. I was back in like less than a week, I'd say. That's yeah. So, so it is great. It is great. So now I'm just, that's that's one thing that I've been speaking to uh, my manager, Dom, uh, uh, to, to get me sponsors who do more recovery stuff because I realized how important it is. Also, because I'm in so much pain all the time, <laughs> I need something, you know, to to uh, to to get rid of it. So uh, that's that's one thing that I'm I'm so focused on now, like recovery. I'm taking my supplements, um, uh, obviously cryotherapy. I do my baths and I do like hot baths because there are no so no lot of saunas at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, also, also back to bases. They're looking after me with the massage and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Nice one, man. Very nice. important. So my final question would be, obviously, you are only 21, but did you have to sacrifice quite a lot of like the going out nights and stuff like that between kind of 18 to 21, obviously, is the years when people go out and get pissed and, you know, go out, go out and do weekend benders and stuff like that. Did you sacrifice a lot of that to be a fighter or do you feel like you could, were you kind of intertwining the two? So I feel like I was sacrificing more. It, it, it depends. Like, I don't get drunk. I never get like absolutely smashed. I don't like. I, I rarely drink. I, maybe I go out, but I'm probably the last one to get there and the first one to come home. So these kind of things, yes. But I feel like my most, I wouldn't say regrets, but the most things I missed out on were more like when I was younger, when I was like between, uh, I'd say 13 and and 16, 17. 
that's when, you know, like my friends were hanging out, you know, and all this stuff and off to school and all those kind of things. For me, it was off to school, go home, get, like rush home, get changed, go on, go to the gym, two hour bus drive to the gym, or two hour bus journey to the gym, read, do your homework, study on the bus, sleep on the bus, then get to the gym, work out, now go home, study more. Like that's another two hours. Like study there, do your the rest of your homework and then you get home at like 10 11 when you're 14 years old you're like like you know tomorrow morning school and those those are things that that oh if if i could have gone for like one off to school stuff when they went out playing basketball or maybe or football or something like that do you get what i mean those those kind of things um also like yeah again that party and i don't get drunk so i never enjoy myself as much probably I just get more like ah. that's why I stopped kind of going out because if I go out with my friends they get smashed they end up pissing me off I have to like you know look at many of them around like I'm literally looking after them you know I'm driving all the time they throw up in my car oh, and the amount of people throw up in my car that's crazy <laughs> it's horrible it's horrible because I was always a drunk because I never drink so everyone always ends up getting in my car drunk then if I drive that's why like if I drive slow then I'm an you know, I get a lot of shit for it. Why do you drive so slow? If I drive fast, they throw up in my car. You know, it's like, it's just, yeah, you know. So that's why I was like, I'm, I'm done with going out. I go out like maybe once a month, once a month I go, go to a pub or something, but that's all. Like, it's too much. Yeah, of course. And obviously, the sacrifices that you made when you were younger and that you're making in your uh, in your age now, yeah, pay off. You know, you, you might be... Yeah, 100%. Exactly, man. You know, you said you want to be a world champion. I have no doubt that you're going to be a world champion in the next couple of years, you know, and then you could be retired by the time you're 30, 31, because you've yeah. made enough money out of, well, out, out of fight game. You there's, know? there's the plan. There's the plan. Like, I want to, it's not that I want to get, get out of it as early as possible, because I never get out of it, because I'm in love with it. Like, even like, well, actually, I was having a conversation about this with Shipman, like, oh, it'd be great. Imagine just having two weeks off. I was like, we wouldn't really have two weeks off. Like after one day or two days, we'd be at the gym like lifting weights. So like at least that. So uh, like I can never like I go home, I watch fighting, I listen to fighters, and you know and all that kind of stuff. So I'm in love with the whole. No, no, this I wouldn't say it's a sport. It's a lifestyle. I, I'm just in love with the lifestyle that I get to live because not a lot of people get to live this lifestyle. Uh, and I would never, you know, fighting will always will be there with me. I feel like. Uh, even on my dad's bad, it's going to be fighting because, I mean, look, even my dad, like, he's 60-something. He still trains. He still goes to the boxing gym. Just before I spoke to you, I, I spoke to you guys, I spoke to him, and he was watching fights and stuff like that. So he's, you know, he's still in that. And I feel like I'm going to be the same. Like, I'm never going to be out-out, but, like, com competing maybe a bit earlier because my body is just fucked already. I'd be, I'm 21, but I've been doing this sport since I was, like, tennis. So... Then I've got a type of mileage in me, not like a proper five fight mileage, but there is a mileage, you know, and my body is a bit smashed. So <laughs> especially yeah. on a Saturday night, <laughs> uh, if, if you had me this on Monday, I probably wouldn't be crying about how smashed my body is, but because Saturday I'm like crying about how <laughs> those days. Yeah. 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 You've had a, had a hard week of training and now this is kind of like <laughs> the first day off and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. You know, well, yeah first afternoon. What'd you say, George? I said you need to eat a hot bath with some salts. Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, I'm actually <laughs> again. I'm I'm going to see my friends to do some jits with them, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm just like I'm there. I'm just helping them with stuff. So I'm just watching it that, that while they're doing it. Uh, so uh, like even then, like as I say, even my free time when I see my friends, it's still fighting. So. Uh, and you know they not fight it like they they do like law in school and you know they just it's in it's in everyone everyone loves fighting mm -hmm. and because of that they love it as well and they do it and uh, I'm just there I'm just hanging out with them watching what, what you know, obviously they're horrible at it and I want to show them this as well so they can you know they know that I think they shit but <laughs> uh, uh, you know it's just it's just that but then I'm gonna come home. I'm gonna have a hot bath. I'm gonna read, and I'm oh mate, and I, I'm gonna eat food. I'm gonna watch anime. Oh, oh, oh I love Saturday nights. <laughs> I love Saturday nights. That's it. 
Do, you, do you, obviously there is some fights on tonight. Are you going to be watching the fights as well tonight on uh, from the UFC, or are you not really into it that much? Who's fight? Oh, uh, Santana's fighting, right? Uh, over yeah, yeah. versus Volkov and a few other people. Yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah, I think so, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll probably watch like what I like. I like Stan Hagen because it's quite good. So I might just watch him tomorrow morning. I'm not gonna stay up until like it's it's annoying because like, I'm not a good sleeper anyway. But I usually fall asleep like or like I'm asleep at that time when the fights are on the the one that like, the main card fights. So I just, I'd rather not. I'd rather just sleep that three two three hours through because like otherwise I wouldn't sleep at all. So yeah. Yeah, of course, man. Well, Norbert, thank you so much for joining us on the show, man. I cannot thank you enough for, for taking the time out of your day. Obviously, you're a busy, busy man. And, you, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. No, nah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And it was good to catch up as well. Yeah, yeah, a long sure. time. When, when, when Corona's all finished, I'll be back down the gym and uh, you can beat me up again. No problem, man. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. George, thank you for being a co-host of the show, as always. Thank you for nice. Norbert. Thank you to Norbert for jumping in. And uh, I'll be posting this, and then we'll be posting pre-fight on Sunday, obviously, the fights tonight, and then we'll be posting over the next coming days and weeks and stuff. So stay tuned to the channel. Hit like, subscribe, retweet, tweet, everything. Find us on Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, and obviously the YouTube channel. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Norbert. Thank you, George. And we'll see you later. Thank you, guys. Thank you.